Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.1 solids, liquids and gases. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Now I'll only be posting around half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube but if you want access to the entire syllabus you can find a link to my Patreon channel in the description. Also if you like the slides I use in my videos which can be used as a teaching resource or revision guide, they will eventually be available to download soon after I finish producing all the videos. Once done, I'll put a link to those in the description as well. Okay, let's begin with the first learning objective. So matter is everything around us that has mass, and there are three states or forms that matter can take, solids, liquids, and gases. Matter is made of tiny particles that are arranged and behave differently in each of these three forms. You need to know the distinguishing properties of solids, liquids, and gases, or in other words, the things that make them different from one another. So solids have a fixed volume and shape and have a defined surface boundary. The particles in a solid are tightly packed together in an organised arrangement. Liquids also have a fixed volume and a surface boundary, but they have no fixed shape. Particles move around, allowing liquids to flow and take the shape of their container. Gases have no fixed volume. They can expand to fill a larger container, meaning particles spread out to fill the space, or contract to fit in a smaller one, like a pressurised gas canister. Particles are widely spaced and move around freely, meaning gases lack a surface boundary and take the shape of their container. So solids have a fixed volume and shape, which is why the ice here remains as a cube and doesn't fill the glass. Liquids have a fixed volume but no fixed shape, and gases have neither a fixed volume nor a fixed shape. Next, you need to describe the structures of solids, liquids and gases in terms of particle separation, arrangement and motion. We'll begin with particle separation. So in solids, particles are tightly packed, so there's no separation or space between the particles. In liquids, there is some separation, although particles are still very close and most are touching. And in gases, particles are widely spaced, so there are big gaps between them. In terms of arrangement, in solids, particles are arranged in a regular, organised fashion, while in both liquids and gases, particles are randomly arranged. Finally, in terms of particle motion, in solids, strong forces of attraction prevent particles from moving around, which is why solids have a fixed shape as opposed to taking the shape of their container. Instead, particles vibrate about their fixed positions in the structure. In liquids, particles move from place to place because intermolecular forces aren't as strong. This allows liquids to flow and take the shape of their container. Finally, gas particles are held together by only very weak forces of attraction. As a result, particles move rapidly in all directions, colliding with each other and the sides of the container. Next, you need to describe changes of state in terms of melting, boiling, evaporating, freezing and condensing. So substances don't take the form of just a solid, a liquid or a gas. They can transition from one state to the other or change state and the driver for that is temperature. So we can see here that as temperature increases, solids melt to become liquids, and liquids evaporate or boil to become gases. As gases are cooled, they condense to form liquids, and liquids freeze to form solids. So melting is a change from a solid to a liquid, and the specific temperature at which a solid melts is called its melting point. The melting point for ice, for example, is zero degrees Celsius. Freezing is a change from a liquid to a solid, so it's the opposite process to melting. The specific temperature at which a liquid becomes a solid is called its freezing point, which is of course the same temperature as the melting point. Boiling is a change from a liquid to a gas, and the specific temperature at which a substance boils is called its boiling point. The boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. Next, we have evaporating, which, like boiling, is a change from a liquid to a gas. Unlike boiling, however, evaporation occurs at a range of temperatures, including below the boiling point. Finally, condensing is a change from a gas to a liquid, so the reverse of boiling and evaporation. Next, you need to describe the effects of temperature and pressure on the volume of a gas. So the volume of a gas is subject to change because of the wide spacing and rapid movement of the particles in a gas. As the temperature of a gas increases, the volume of the gas increases proportionally. 
as long as the pressure remains constant. Equally, as the temperature of a gas decreases, the volume of the gas decreases as well, again providing pressure remains constant. Simply put, gases occupy more space as they heat up and less space as they cool down. As the pressure of a gas increases, which is depicted by the image on the left-hand side, the volume of the gas decreases proportionally, providing this time that the temperature remains constant. Essentially, by pushing down on the plunger, gas particles are forced closer together and therefore occupy less space. By the same token, a decrease in pressure, depicted by the image on the right, causes gas particles to spread out and fill the available space, resulting in an increase in volume. Okay, that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section. For extended, you need to explain changes of state in terms of kinetic particle theory. This means you need to explain what happens to the particles of a substance as it transitions from one state to another. Three pieces of information that sort of underline kinetic particle theory are as follows. Number one, matter is composed of tiny particles that have kinetic energy, meaning they're moving all the time. Number two, as temperature increases, particles gain more kinetic energy, meaning particles move more at higher temperatures. And number three, particles are attracted to one another by intermolecular forces, meaning they have a tendency to stick together. Okay, let's begin with melting, the transition of a solid to a liquid. So when a solid is heated, particles gain more kinetic energy and vibrate faster. At the melting point, particles have gained enough energy to overcome the intermolecular forces holding them in place. As a result, the ordered arrangement breaks down and particles start moving more freely. This of course means it now has the properties of a liquid in that it can flow and take the shape of its container. Next, freezing, which is the transition from a liquid to a solid. When the temperature of a liquid decreases, its particles lose kinetic energy and slow down. At the freezing point, the forces of attraction needed to hold them in position within a solid, organised structure form between them. The substance now has a fixed shape, as particles can no longer move from place to place. Now on to boiling. When you heat a liquid, its particles gain more kinetic energy, causing them to move faster and collide with greater force. At the boiling point, the particles have gained enough energy to overcome the intermolecular forces holding them in a liquid state. Particles spread out, moving freely in all directions, which shows us that the substance has transitioned to its gaseous state. Next, evaporation, which is another way in which a liquid turns into a gas. Unlike boiling, evaporation only takes place on the surface of a liquid and occurs at a range of temperatures at and below the boiling point. For example, water evaporates from the surface of puddles at temperatures well below the boiling point of water. This is because in liquids, particles don't all have the same kinetic energy. As they move and collide, some particles at the surface gain enough energy to escape the attractive forces of the liquid and become gaseous. Raising the temperature of the liquid increases the average kinetic energy of the particles, leading to higher rates of evaporation. And this is why your towel dries faster on a sunny day. The final one is condensing, which is a change from a gas to a liquid. When a gas loses heat, its particles lose kinetic energy and come closer together. When they lose enough energy, forces of attraction form between them and the substance turns into a liquid. This is why water vapour forms droplets on a cold window, clouds in the sky which form at high altitudes where temperatures are much lower, and dew on a cold morning. All right, now you need to apply what you've just learned about changes of state and kinetic particle theory to heating and cooling curves. So a heating curve shows how the temperature and state of a substance like water changes as it's heated over time. This one begins with ice at a temperature below its melting point, so below zero degrees Celsius. As the ice is heated, temperature gradually increases until it reaches its melting point at zero degrees. The line is horizontal here, showing that the temperature doesn't change until all the ice has melted. The particles gain no more energy until all the attractions holding them in the solid state are overcome. Next, the temperature of the liquid increases until it reaches 100 degrees, which is the boiling point of water. At the boiling point, we have another plateau, showing that the temperature doesn't increase until all the water has turned into vapour. As soon as all the water is boiled, temperature begins to rise again as particles in the gaseous state gain more energy. A cooling curve shows how the temperature and state of a substance changes as it's cooled over time. 
so it's basically the opposite of a heating curve. This time we start with water vapour above 100 degrees. Temperature gradually decreases as the gas is cooled until it reaches the boiling point. At the boiling point, the water vapour condenses. The line is horizontal, showing that the temperature doesn't change until all the vapour has turned into water. Particles stop losing energy as forces of attraction between them form. Next, the temperature of the liquid decreases until it reaches zero degrees, the freezing point of water. Then we have another plateau showing that the temperature doesn't change again until all the water has turned into ice. Particles stop losing energy as the forces of attraction needed to hold them in position in a solid form between them. Finally, when all the liquid has frozen, the temperature of the ice decreases. Finally, you need to explain the effects of temperature and pressure on the volume of a gas with reference to kinetic particle theory. So as the temperature of a gas increases, particles gain more kinetic energy and therefore collide more frequently with the walls of the container and with greater force. If the container has no fixed volume, like a balloon or gas syringe, the particles spread out and volume increases. The inverse is of course true for a decrease in temperature. Finally, pressure. So an increase in pressure forces gas particles closer together, so volume decreases, while a decrease in pressure causes gas particles to spread out to fill the available space and volume to increase. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.1, solids, liquids and gases. If you benefited from this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon, where I'll be uploading the entire chemistry syllabus. Join me there for our next lesson on topic 1.2, diffusion.